And like we both, like I was holding a picture of him that his mother had sent me. So I, we both just like did this 180 look in his direction. We were like, try, and it was every, I had to do everything in my power to not just like run over and like <laughs> attack this kid. But I was like, I was like, Trey. And I, so I had to, I was like, my mother sent me here from South Carolina, clear across the other coast of the US to find you. And I've been waiting to meet you for like three months. And he was stunned, you know. This is a kid that's been living on the streets for, for five years, he mean, eating out of dumpsters and sleeping in tents outside the side of town. And he has a really rough life. And um, he's in kind of a dark place emotionally and psychologically. But, I mean, he just burst into smiles, you know. And, like, I, we invited him down to, to sit and have a cup of tea. And I shot a little video for his mom, you know. I was like, if I was your mom, what would you say to me? And we shot a video, and I sent it to her. It was really cool. So, I mean, that's just one example of like, how in the world does that even happen? Like, we wouldn't even think that something like that was possible, but amazingly enough, it is. Um, okay, I'm gonna talk about this guy real quick because it's just a short, simple story. Um, this picture is kind of hard to see in this picture, but if you wanna pass that around, it's hard to see now because of the way it's cropped. But, that's Tony, and I, I met Tony recently, actually, in Baltimore. And I was just walking around, um, like, by the Inner Harbor, and Tony was going by in his wheelchair, and I, I was, like, just walking, and I just kind of did one of these, like, waves down by my waist, like, waved at him. And I, he was talking to himself. Like, a lot of people on the street talk to themselves because they've been alone for a long time. So he was talking to himself, and he, he I hear him go, whoa! Nobody's waved at me in years. And I just stopped because I was like, really? Like, no one's even waved at this guy? So I went back and, like, walked back to where he was. And I, was, I asked him, I said, really, Tony? Like, I asked his, his name. He said his name was Tony. And I said, really, no one has waved at you in years? And he said, yeah. Um, he had one leg, and he was, he had had it amputated um, because he um, had an infection. and. His mom died, and he's been on drugs for a long time, and he goes to a methadone clinic, and his life is just really, it's been, he's been on the streets for more than 20 years, so he's been on the streets for a long time. And he just said that he's so used to people ignoring him, he hasn't had anybody, like, touch him or, or talk to him and longer than he can remember. And I asked him if there was anything I could do to help him out, and he said, like, could you just hold my hand? He said, nobody's touched me in so long. Could you just hold my hand? And I'm not going to lie, that's an awkward situation. <laughs> um, <laughs> because it's a complete stranger, you know? And you're just like, this is weird. You know, you're in the middle of like um, a city, and you don't, you know, you just met them. But, um, but I did, and I, I held his hand for a few minutes while we talked about his life and his mom and, and like, what his future looks like. And it's not good, you know? But it's... That's just a, a, a moment in both of our lives, like when, when I, I took a couple steps away and, and we were kind of saying our goodbyes, like his, his whole face had changed. I mean, he was smiling and he just, he said again, like, thank you so much for just holding my hand. Like, it's just, it makes me feel like a person, you know? And it's, it, it, those are the experiences that like really make you appreciate what you have because like, I'm, I'm pretty sure that any one of you today, like, if you needed a hug, someone would be here to give it to you, you know? But there are a lot of people out there that don't even have that privilege. Like, they don't even have a friend to give them a hug when they need it. So, um, most of the time, like, these socks are not, it's not about the socks. It's not about just giving someone socks for their feet. It's about the relationship that starts when you open up the conversation. It's about, like, where that sock can lead. So um, just kind of maybe take that with you, and and next time you see people that are that are out there like on the street, maybe they're begging, or maybe they're just kind of sitting there, just kind of think twice about what their life is like and what each one of us can do, like on a one-person level, to to make their life better. Like it's amazing that just like a smile or a conversation or just treating someone like a human being can drastically alter their day, and then like who knows where that'll lead to. So, just any, anybody else have any questions? Right. Okay. So she, for those of you who couldn't hear, she was saying that like the people with the least give the most. 
that she was going around neighborhoods and like it seemed like the more affluent neighborhoods they wouldn't give her anything and then like the people who don't seem to have a whole lot will like give you nearly everything that they have and like I, I've been shouting that anthem since like the first week I think it was like a huge a very difficult lesson for me to learn though because we don't want to face that reality that that people who have next to nothing will like take the shirt off their back to give it to you um, in relation to what you're talking about with the going like in the neighborhoods um, just like a quick story about that um, when I first started going door to door for canned goods I really had no idea like what to expect or where to go or anything. I still really kind of just wing it I just like pull over when I feel like I'm supposed to pull over and I park and I just start walking well the maybe I think it was in Georgia like the second week of doing it um, I stopped in a neighborhood and I started walking around and I really like I realized that like this was a, a much lower income neighborhood and I was kind of kicking myself because I'm like man why am I collecting here because I knew that the people in this neighborhood weren't gonna have excess you know and I thought like I'm pretty sure some of these people I mean might might go to a soup kitchen or a food pantry to get it so I shouldn't be asking them I felt really bad and as I was walking around and I was knocking on doors it was amazing how many people came outside of their house and stood on the porch and like hugged me and they were like so grateful for what I was doing They're like you're doing such a good thing and we need people like you if I had anything to give you I would but I have nothing like, I want to give you something so bad, but I have nothing in my house. And it was just tearing my heart out, you know? It's like, and I just, I don't even know what possessed me to just, like, keep going from door to door, but I did. And I, I was probably seven or eight houses that were all, people would answer and come out and just be like, I would love to help you, but I have no food. And it was really, it was really bothering me. And finally, like, I, I had walked up and down the street, and I was back at my truck, and I was just going to leave. I was like, forget this, this was stupid, why did I come here? And um, there was one more house next to my truck. So I thought, okay, I'll go to the last house. So I went up and knocked. And for whatever reason, like this lady came to the door and she was like, oh yeah, I have exactly what you need. And she went back into her house and she came out with like a hamper full of canned goods. I have no idea why she just set it on the porch and then she went back inside and shut the door. She didn't say anything else. And I just looked at this hamper full of food and I was like, how weird the last house like in this so I took all of that food and I like went back to all other eight houses on the block and I just like put food <laughs> on their front porch because I was like that's why this stuff happens you know like, all of these people wanted to help me so bad and then they and they couldn't and then this one woman's kindness like she fed her whole block like I don't know if she'll ever like know that she did that but <laughs> it's really cool and um but like, you know, in comparison, a few weeks later, I was in like, I accidentally kind of, I just pulled over and parked and I was in a country club and they didn't realize it. And I was like going knocking on like half a million dollar houses. And I think I collected like 10 things, you know, in like 20 houses. So it does really remain true that like the people with the least really do give the most. And I see that time and time and time again. And um, I keep saying, we don't need street outreach. We need country club outreach. The people on the street, they get it. They're the most generous, compassionate people. They know God. They see God in what they do. They show love. They, they share. They understand. Like, they, they get it in a way. Like, when you have nothing, you learn really quick what life is really about. It's not about stuff. It's not about money. It's not about television. It's about love, and it's about, about sharing and being kind and being compassionate. And, like, the people on the street know that. It's, it's the people with all the stuff that forget. <laughs> It's those people that we need to be talking to. Um, so that's kind of where my focus is at now. Yeah. I think we're, are we wrapping up? Are we about out of time? Okay, cool. Thank you guys so much again for coming out. I appreciate it.